Hey, everybody out there. Tonight's topic is, are they greasing the skids for Joe Biden? Are they going to be ousting him fairly shortly, maybe before the midterms? Is that plan afoot? Is it already underway? And of course, with us is uh, Mark Collinsworth, uh, going counterclockwise, a very global capital investment and a rack of Rack Attack Gamer YouTube channel. And what is, let's start with uh, Mark. What do you think is going on? I mean, uh, this week, first of all, he announces he has cancer, and then they had to backtrack on that. That he, what he was referring to was like skin cancer years ago, but that didn't really fit the way he was describing it. He was describing it as a result of industrial pollution in, in Delaware, <laughs> and then um, you know he comes down with COVID. So, what do you think's going on? I think it comes back to that he's he's just way too old to be president. He's senile. I mean, shoot, even Saturday Night Live, as liberal as they are, they're starting to make jokes about his uh, senility. Um, but what's also kind of interesting is, the, I guess, the biggest thing, some of these polls that are coming out, his polls are now well below Donald Trump's lowest scores. And what I find so interesting are these, these are polls coming from liberal media institutions, which tells me the media is trying to send a message to him, please don't run again. Or are they in on the ouster? You know, suddenly they've got all these negative stories about him. And, uh, you know, before, you know, it was all ignored and now they're piling on. So in other words, you know, is the plan afoot now that they got to get rid of him maybe before the midterms thinking if he's gone, they'll have a better chance or if not before the midterms, uh, at least by 2024. Rack, what do you think? Uh, it'll be somewhere near near the midterms, I think. I don't think they're going to keep him very much longer. I don't think he could be kept very much longer. He's making too many mistakes, and there seems to be a progression with whatever he has. I don't want to diagnose him, but obviously he's struggling with uh, mental stuff. And, uh, yeah, something's going to have to happen. I mean, he's going to become more and more an embarrassment to them. I think I think that's where this COVID might come in. He might might be looking to hide him away for a bit. Yeah. Well, you know, it seems like the vultures are circling now because uh, Hillary Clinton, within, I guess within hours of them announcing that it has COVID, uh, she posted an old photo of her on the campaign trail with Bill Clinton, you know, indicating that, you know, <laughs> maybe she's back in action or soon to be. And then even more curious, uh, Gavin Newsom, California governor who has presidential uh, aspirations quite clearly, he's brought into the White House. Now, are they going to be presenting him? And do they really think that he would be more uh, of a sellable, saleable item to the general public than, let's say, Kamala Harris? And what would they do with her? So, you know, it's a big mix of various factors that they have to balance there. Mark, what do you think, you know, the, the overall plan might be in order to remove Biden and bring in somebody else? And who would that be? Well, you know, first I want to say, you know, if, if he doesn't run, you know, incumbency is a, a big thing in getting reelected. If he doesn't run, that's a strike against him. And normally when the incumbent doesn't run, that usually creates a contested contest. And if that gets drug out, you I mean, you look at Ronald, when Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter ran, Jimmy Carter had several other people contesting his presidency, just like you have here with Biden. And it drug out for months and months and months, whereas Ronald Reagan had already pretty much had cleared the board off in the first two months of the primary. If he's not, if he's not, if the incumbent doesn't win, it puts him in a very bad position. And then as for um, Newsom, Democrats are just really out of touch. If they think someone like Newsom, as blue liberal as he is, has any chance of winning any states, <laughs> winning any states that are east of California, they are sadly mistaken. <laughs> And how much, uh, how viable would uh, Kamala be? Well, just this week, um, she is now, her, we talked about Joe Biden's polls being so, so bad, being so far under where Donald Trump's lowest point is. This week, um, Kamala Harris, her polls now have just dropped right below Biden. So she's in the books as being the worst vice president in history. And let's not forget, when she was running for president, she dropped out of the primary before she even went to California, which was her home state. Why did she drop out? Because she didn't want the embarrassment of losing it because she only had a 3% popularity rate in the state, her home state. Wow. Well, you know, now again, is Hillary 
rearing her uh, ugly head, so to speak, as the saying goes. Uh, she, within hours of, uh, of Biden announcing he had COVID, apparently she was posting stuff on her website, uh, you know, the old days when she was campaigning with Bill on the campaign trail. And, you know, everybody, uh, it's, it's widely believed that, you know, she's not through yet. She still is determined to be the nation's first woman president. So how would they get her in since, you know, her, 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 she has a, a problem with popularity as well? Well, I think it'd be, a, 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 well, I wish she would run because I think it'd be a disaster for the Democrats. And the reason why is look at all the stuff that she had when she was running in the primaries, how she was getting taken on. I mean, look at, she was going up against Bernie Sanders and that drug out for months and months, months going against one other person because all the stuff was coming up. If she run, if she runs, this is what's going to happen. They're going to hit her on the 30,000 emails that are missing. And not to mention this time around, they have all this stuff with the R Russian collusion stuff that she dreamed up out of thin air to try to frame Donald Trump. They're going to hear hot and heavy on that. I don't see her really recovering. And with all that said, tell you a funny story. Back in here in February, I was in Texas meeting with a client and we're at a restaurant and some woman walks through there wearing a, a Trump T-shirt and the and the client was a potential client. Sister goes, I wish they would just stop wearing the T-shirts. The man lost. We're never going to vote for Donald Trump again. He's the most despicable, underhanded crook on the planet. And they said, except if Hillary Clinton runs, then I'll, I'll vote for Donald Trump because he's actually 10 times worse. So I think that says a lot. <laughs> Uh, Rack, I mean, how do you think this is actually going to work out? I mean, what are they going to do? You know, they I, don't, I, don't, I, I agree with Mark on uh, Hillary Clinton. I don't think so. I think the, it, that, that's old news now. I think they're looking for, they're not going to want to make the same mistake as they made with uh, Biden going in. Uh, older, and who knows what, what, what her health is like. Uh, and she's burned plenty of bridges. Uh, as far as Gavin Newsom goes, uh, I also agree with Mark. Yeah, way too left, way too blue. I don't think he's going to hold up in any type of popularity. I don't think they're going to make that mistake, but I will admit they brought him to the White House when the cat's away, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you Have you forgotten about Michelle Obama? No. Uh, yeah. Now, now uh, Roger Stone, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Roger Stone, uh, Longtime uh, confidant uh, of uh, Trump, yeah. uh, he is predicting um, uh, Michelle Obama and Pete Buttigieg uh, somehow <laughs> shifting their way into there. Now I don't know. I think that's the ticket he's talking about for the next election. But who knows what's going to happen because Biden can't really stay there. They're going to have to do something. But again, you know, as Mark was saying, you know, how they're they're out of it, they're they're delusional about the stuff. I mean, Buddha Judge, I, I can't see him being uh, sold to the public very well. So well, as a secondary, by VP, VP. Yeah, but I mean, even so, I mean, that doesn't, I don't think, reflect well on the top of the ticket, which would be Michelle Obama. And actually, uh, you know, how much of an asset would she be? I mean, you know, again, it's that split between the conservatives and the Trump people. And more and more, generally working class people against the elite liberal Democrats, which uh, Michelle Obama represents in spades. So, well, so how, how you know how how practical it would be for for her for her to be, be brought up? I'll let Mark answer in a minute. But uh, from my perspective, you know, Biden really ain't running something, They're running anything. So someone is running something behind the scenes. So does it really matter what kind of puppet they put up in front? Well, that's, it, ma uh, it matters if they want to retain or, or resume power. It matters a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah, but this is still, you know, we're still midterms here. I mean, they can they can do some sort of shifty maneuver when it comes time for election time. But, uh, you know, whoever they put up front, they're still going to be pulling their strings. Someone who's in the background is running the country. Biden's not running the country. Mark. And, and they're going to look for another person just to put up front, another talking head. Mark, Michelle Obama? Well, I, I don't think so. Um, well, she has no political background. So, you know, that's kind of the, one of the problems that Donald Trump ran into. He didn't really know what they call, you know, the, the Potomac Waltz, per se. At least Barack at least had some experience as a senator. So he kind of knew the backstabbing game, the, the Game of Thrones, per se. Um, Michelle Obama really won't have that. So you can see the same thing occur there. But 
more importantly, you know, we talked about, you know, um, Dr. Lichman, who did a huge study going all the way back to George Washington, called, he wrote a book called The 13 Keys of the White House. He says all elections are based on the current, who, who basically sits in the, in the White House at the time the election's held. And votes aren't for who they want to be the new president. The votes are always either say are either for who's in the office or who's or or who's leaving the office. It's always about the current situation. So, if Michelle Obama runs, uh, Biden's already done so much damage right now. When people go to vote according to Dr. Lichman's theory, they're going to vote against Joe Biden. Even if Joe Biden is not running again, they will, voters send a message saying we don't like the current status quo no matter what it is. So how would that reflect then on, on Michelle Obama? Well, Michelle Obama would be connected with Joe Biden. They're going to run on stuff like, you know, Dr. Lichman says they're going to bring up the inflation stuff, the high gasoline prices, uh, run a, runaway spending, um, the, the problems with the, the foreign military, all that kind of stuff. And they're going to basically tie her in to being a Democrat with Joe Biden even more so, they're going to say, Joe Biden was your husband's vice president. He basically used your husband's policies, the same policies you're going to use. They're going to connect that somehow, and they're going to make it look like she's going to be a Joe Biden, too, in the office. Yeah. Well, you know, more essentially here, more basically, first they have to get rid of uh, Biden. And if they don't want Kamala Harris to be the standard bearer, they'd have to get rid of her, too. Uh, and then the next in line would be Nancy Pelosi. So, you know, I don't see her being brought up as a viable candidate. So how would this work mechanically? How would they get Biden and Kamala out and somebody more presentable in? Anybody? I'll leave that to Mark. I really don't, again, I'm, I'm going to use the, the 13 keys of the White House. If you, if you eliminate Joe Biden from the ticket, you're going to have three things that are going to occur. The, the incumbent won't be running, and this is part of the 13 keys that you have to pass to become, to be elected. If he doesn't run, that eliminates the incumbency. That's a strike against the Democrats taking the, the White House or keeping the White House. It opens up the uh, contested primary, which is another strike against them. And more importantly, it also brings in historically when the incumbent is not running, it brings in a third party to run. And those third party normally sucks off votes from the current White House. So, I mean, it's, I just don't see it. I mean, let's face it. They're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. There's no way they can, they can pull this out without being a disaster. Well, what, me, what, you're talking yes. about, what you're talking about would be basically uh, would apply to the 2024 election. What if they want to bring in a changing of the guard uh, earlier, maybe even uh, before the midterms? Now, how would they accomplish that? Well, the only way you can really do that, there's only two ways that that's going to happen. Either the president basically has to, well, three ways. The president dies, he's either impeached or he resigns. Well, we've seen what happened with presidents that have been impeached. It doesn't go well for the upcoming election. Um, we've seen what's happened with presidents who resign doesn't work out very well for the upcoming election and presidents that die <laughs> you don't see much success right there either okay let's say biden um passes. There's, another, there's another method let's see what's yeah that way 14th amendment that's what you're trying to get to or 25th 25th amendment I'm in. all right even if they do that how do they get rid of kamala did Mark and, want to take it? Because she would assume the presidency if they get rid of Biden one way or the other. She would appoint her own VP, right? Excuse me? She would appoint her own VP, right? She would, yeah. After, so, after she ascends to the presidency, yeah, she'd appoint her own VP. So she, she would not she would select a, a VP and then it'd have to be approved. So then what would happen is that she would appoint someone someone that they tap, someone that they want up front. And then she'd give it a couple of weeks or whatever, and then duck out. She would probably uh, resign. Uh, from my reading on her, she would not go easily or willingly. I don't see. I don't. I don't see it that way. I don't see any of these players as uh, leaders. Okay, they're there. They they're workers. They're employees, and they know that someone else is running the show. So they're they're all just yes men. They'll do whatever they're told. 
that's my perspective on the matter. Now, I do have a question for Mark, but I'll let you continue on this until we're done with this. No, cool. well, I was going to say, but, you know, uh, uh, personal ego may play into it with Kamala, uh, you know, where she's, she's ascended to the vice presidency. And now, you know, she's a step away from, the, uh, from being the, the top person. Is she just going to say, yeah, okay, you know, for the sake of the oh, party, she'll fall on her sword? How embarrassing it would be for her to run and she actually causes California to flip red. Let's not forget when Newsom got recalled from the, the voters in California, Democrats hit the panic button. They were sending Barack Obama. Democratic super PACs were sending money in for the Newsom program because they were afraid that the, the Republican was going to win California. Kamala is not going to run. How embarrassing would that be to lose California as a Democratic president? <laughs> and, and, and let's not forget this. Can you just not see the, the, the ads right now? That, that, the interview she was doing last week, she said, I believe the problem with America is people have stopped believing. If we just get back to believing again, everybody would believe in themselves again. If they just believe that everything would be back to the original belief system. And I mean, and then to add fuel to the fire, her, the, her speechwriter resigned and people said, they, she actually has a speechwriter? <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> She does that a lot. She keeps repeating the, the same yeah. phrases. And, uh, uh, but uh, you know, when you say uh, when Newsom was recalled, when they attempted to recall him and that recall yep. failed. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, who else is on the bench? You know? I, 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 well, I was just thinking of one right now. I didn't, I didn't ponder this beforehand, but uh, I wonder if Millie would be on the bench. General Millie. I mean, he played ball their way. He denounced Trump. Matter of fact, he denounced Trump to the point of treason, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, but I think he's damaged goods, goods as well, especially the Afghanistan debacle, which you know he was in the center of. And you know, he didn't resign in protest. He didn't go against the president. He didn't say this was you know a, a weakening of America and national security, et cetera, et cetera. I might want a military person there if it goes along with my past theories uh, of creating chaos and then maybe a, even into a martial law scenario. Yeah, but again, uh, you know, if the boat isn't fixed, how are they going to sell him to the public? I, I don't think he's very... Are we talking, well, see, we're talking two different things here. We're talking like a midterm area uh, shuffle, and then we're also talking election. Well, I'm talking about the midterm area shuffle. That's where I'm saying it really might. I mean, it might be a possibility. I was going to ask Mark that. What does he think about it? Um, I don't think, Neil, I, 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 again, I think there's too much damaged goods. And let's not forget, I think after the Republicans take the House, I think you're going to see the next two years of nothing but investigations, investigations into Afghanistan, Millie, the, the, the uh, Secretary of Defense, Biden, I wouldn't be surprised if Biden has an impeachment charge on him. There are going to be so much scandals and so much negative investigations coming out over the next two years. I think it's going to kill anybody's chance that's currently attached to this administration's chances whatsoever. Well, you would hope that that's what's going to happen, but I don't know if it's necessarily going to happen. I mean, anything between now and midterms and a little bit shortly after or whatever, anything can happen. Uh, we could go into full-blown martial law. They've been toying with that idea, it seems, because they've been almost presenting some legislation that uh, gives more powers to the president and uh, no oversight uh, from Congress of the military. What, what's going on with all this? You know, let's, let's think about something that played out generally along the lines that we're talking about, speculating about Nixon. Now, if you remember... Uh, Nixon was on the rocks. You know, he, he was facing uh, impeachment and, and conviction or removal. So, but before that happened, they stirred a controversy, a scandal involving Agnew, the vice president. He resigned first. And then while Nixon was still in the White House before he was forced out, he appointed Gerald Ford, uh, who was confirmed. So he, Gerald Ford became vice president. Then when Nixon had to go, resigned, because he was facing certain impeachment and removal, then uh, Ford became president and he was considered more acceptable generally. So, you know, could it play out along those lines, the similar lines? Where before Biden is dumped, 
they'd have to get rid of the vice president. So, you know, I've said for a while now, if you start seeing moves with, with Kamala and, you know, a scandal developing around her, whatever, then to me, that would indicate that the Nixon plan is afoot. Mark? I'm going to go back. I mean, you're, you're getting rid of Joe Biden because his policies are so bad. I mean, can't you see the, the Republicans saying, oh, you're vice president. All these policies that suck so bad, you obviously sit in the room and help make them. She can't sit there and say, I was an absentee vice president. Um, speaking of being absentee, they have assigned her all these different, she's the czar of this and the czar of that, and she hasn't done it. The situations she's been put in charge of have actually become worse. I, I think, you know, the Democrats know they can't run her. She's just as big of a liability as Joe Biden. Well, that's what I'm saying. So they have to get rid of her first. To how do you do that? To bring well, in another yeah, person vice that, president I mean, who would then be more acceptable if that person ascends to the presidency after Biden is dumped. <laughs> well, you know, another funny thing, I was, I was, I was on them. Um, earlier I was on them, um, you know, predict it's the, um, it's, a, it's a gambling site out of Europe where they make predictions on all kinds of stuff in politics. Who's going to win, you know, governor of Louisiana, stuff like that. Anyway, I was looking at the, um, who they think is going to be the, the president after 2024. Uh, Democrats aren't even on the list. <laughs> It's either DeSantis or Trump. That's how bad the voting polls have got where they're not even tr trying to put a Democrat on the on the on the odds list right now. How much damage do you think the January 6th committee is doing to Trump? You want to take that rack or you want to give it to me? No, no I mean it's ridiculous. Well, this is my thing. It's ridiculous, the, but what I'm asking is how much damage is it doing despite how, how ridiculous it is? Well, I think the people that already believe in, in that uh, line of uh, narrative, that that's the ones that they're impressing. No, but I don't think they're gaining new people. Now, is, I it, think, is it moving the needle or is it, you know, pretty much the same uh, dichotomy? You know, the Trump supporters and, and re conservative Republicans against liberal Democrats, no matter what the January 6th committee supposedly, allegedly is coming up with on, against Trump. I think, I think the, the, the Jan 6 thing has done little to nothing to hurt Donald Trump. I've actually seen in some things, he's actually become more popular because of the, the, the people that are kind of don't like big government, see big government going after a person that stood up against big government. And they're, and they're, they're taking a stronger stance against them. But let's also not forget when after we get past the midterms, you're going to see, I've heard the Republicans are going to run their own version of Jan 6 committee, and they're going to bring out all this stuff that hasn't been, been brought out. They're going to bring, they're going to subpoena Nancy Pelosi. They're going to subpoena, you know, Kamala Harris. They're going to just run, um, run him in the ground. And that's going to boost Trump up even more when the truth of the facts come out and make Biden look that much worse. Did you see the video of uh, Trump that they were presenting as just major evidence? No. The, the final video, they're, they're seeing uh, where uh, they caught him in outtakes as he was being a presidential, given presidential speech. And uh, someone was asking him about, I don't know if it was a question and then his answer, or if he just kept trying to do an answer pre, pre-written. But he, he was reading off a script and he was saying something to the effect of, uh, well, uh, uh, yes, uh, it's already been determined in other words, he's trying to tell people to move on. Uh, it's already been determined. Pence already uh, made made his decision. Uh, and then there was another line in there saying that it's that uh, the election was over. And he goes, "Oh, I, I don't want to say that line." And this is their major uh, world shattering evidence. Now, while I watched that, I thought it was cute, charming, endearing. Maybe I didn't think it was a major uh, earth shattering thing but i'm thinking of people that are already into this narrative that like the narrative those are the ones that are like oh my god he said it he said it it's on camera it, it, to me it doesn't matter but what's going to happen those same people if they if the republicans run their version of january 6th and you bring up the stuff where the i'm sure they're going to show it where the democrats had up there saying where they had donald trump saying go down to the capitol go down there and and voice your opinion Whereas they cut it out in the Democrats version, they're going to show it in the Republican, 
Go down and be peaceful. Have a peaceful protest that you are entitled to. They're going to show this. And, and people, we already know how bad mainstream media is getting beat up. What's going to happen when people that are liberals right now, or let's say moderate Democrats that sit there and go, hey, Jan 6 people, they lied to me. They, they faked a video to make me hate Trump. Is that going to make those people want to vote Democrat or want them to vote Republican? How much of a chance do you think they have of indicting Trump and maybe even putting him in jail? None. I'll tell you why. The second thing, because I think that this, this, this third world country, Stalin, Lenin type Jan 6 committee, if they indict him, it now gives him a legal defense of discovery. That means all these people, you can't cover stuff up. You go to a courtroom and you try to do that video and you start to edit stuff out then you can be held in contempt of court of messing with evidence. They can't pull those tricks. You're going to get Nancy Pelosi is going to get subpoenaed. You're going to bring out all the facts that the, the Democrats are trying to avoid like the plague. And that's the exact reason why Democrats keep saying when they get on CNN, they ask, are you going to bring criminal charges against Donald Trump? Well, we haven't decided that yet <laughs> because they don't want it to because it gives it puts Donald Trump and them on equal footing and only the facts will matter and the facts here will kill the Democrats. Well, so we're, you know, we're, not, we're not that far away from the midterms. So do you think, well, let's close on, on this um, question. Either, either of you would take your turn on this. Uh, will the midterm elections be fair and, um, and um, not fixed? I don't think we have had a fair election for quite a while. I mean, I see some of these Democrats, which I don't know, I would even say the left, the liberals, even them, even they don't like certain Democrats, but they still get in. Uh, I mean, lifelong almost. And uh, so something is, is swaying that. And I, and I would imagine that a lot of the election, I, I think it's probably just, uh, they've got it refined now. They have the system refine for whoever they want in will get in and uh that's been shown in the uh that movie 2000 mules yeah mark what do you think are the elections going to be straight I, I i think they'll be i think they will be run very efficiently where you have republican legislatures in place that are going to make sure they tighten up the rules and the laws i mean texas just today announced they're training 3,000 poll watchers to make sure their election is run 100% legitimate. So, yeah, in, in those states, yeah. But states like California, Oregon, I, I really couldn't say what, which way that would go. So you're convinced there's going to be a red wave in the midterms? I think it's going to be a red tsunami. Rack? I, I hope so. I, I think so. I th for, just look around, gas prices, food, this, baby formula, that. I would, I would assume that it's going to be a red wave. Uh, but with their trickery, I don't know. It might not be as big as it should be. Well, let's not forget who's the I, – I, I can't remember her name. The, um, the Mexican-born woman that run the congressional seat in Texas, a seat that hasn't gone towards Republicans, what, in 75 years, and she won it. I think that, and not, let's not forget Virginia. Virginia elected in a red wave a Republican governor. I think there's a, an underlying tone here, and that's the exact reason why. I've lost count now. What, 35 Democrats now have said they're resigning and they will not run in the midterm elections? Oh, they're man. jumping up. That's what happens when the ship sinks, the rats jump. And uh, apparently more and more are jumping from uh, reports, even in mainstream liberal media. So uh, we'll see what happens. And guys, thanks for being with us once again. And all of you out there, thanks for joining us. And we'll be back with another, we think, entertaining and important and informative topic before long. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.